this is the Victoria's Wool podcast. I'm Victoria. I believe this is episode 30. Um, I just thought I'd just sit down without much of a plan and talk about all the things that I'm working on because I've got quite a few whips and um, I think I have everything here with me. But uh, I have been having a lot of fun um, trying to get all of my projects to be in this place where I could just pick them up anytime and work on them. So I think one of the things that stops me from making progress on a project is not knowing what to, the next step is. So if I can't just pick it up and work on it without having to do much thinking, then I don't work on that project as much. So I've been, um, at the beginning of my planner, uh, on the month at a glance, at the bottom there's all these note pages and I've just made little columns for each for each project. And I'm just kind of like writing in what, what stage I am in that project. Just because I have a lot of projects right now, which I don't normally like having. I kind of think three to five is good, how that feels for me. But um, I think I have nine. No, I have 10. I'm going to start one. So I have, I'll have 10. Um, maybe I'll be able to finish one before I start. But anyways, it's March and it's raining today. I was about to go out and take this little dog out for a walk when I noticed that it was pouring. So I thought maybe I'll film a podcast real quick before and it'll stop raining as hard and then we can go out after. But it's March in the Pacific Northwest and um, there's a little bit of fog on the water and we're gonna probably get mostly rain all week. So sort of how it is. It feels like, oh yeah, this is very familiar. Um, weather here at this time of year. Ground's really saturated and um, it's been like cold and then it goes back up to, you know, not being warm, but sort of this middle ground of like high 40s to mid 50s is sort of the normal. And then it'll like drop down and get into the low 40s and early high 30s and then it'll be like, we're cold and then, you know, back and around. So it'll rain probably for many months and then we might have a dry May and then we'll probably have a wet June. We'll see. Last June we had a heat wave and it was like 105 degrees. So things are different now, but generally that is the way that it goes. Um, the only thing, well, I guess there's two things that I'm working on that are my own designs. Um, I am working on another pair of farmer's market mittens. I showed the first one partially done last episode, but I finished it last night. And um, I'm leaving this end really long until I block it because recently I took a sweater sleeve apart and I had blocked it already. And all the ends were really nicely woven in and then I had to take them out. And that was so annoying <laughs> that, you know, before I block and the next thing I work on or anything in the future, I should really like, if I'm gonna block, I'm gonna leave this tail really long. Um, so it's woven in, I just didn't cut it as short as I normally would in the case that I wanna take it out. Then I'll be able to find it. I couldn't find the ends I'd woven in. That's They were so nicely woven in in that sweater that I couldn't find them. So it's really annoying. <laughs> so anyways, that's why there's that long tail. Everything else is um, tucked away because I just thought, well, maybe that's the only thing I would change. I don't know, but so I made these shorter than the originals. The originals is about three inch length. Um, I made them a little shorter this time so that the cuff of my jacket and the mitten can perfectly meet each other. And so there's not a lot of overlap because the jacket I'm wearing right now is really um, not accommodate. Like I can't tuck in. I have to put the gloves on and then put my jacket on to get the glove to go under the jacket cuff. So I was trying to like accommodate the fact that they just need to meet. And um, I used a double strand, two strands of uh, the Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company, uh, her naturally dyed indigo on natural sock. And uh, after I finished that first one last night, I started the second one. 
So, yeah. And uh, especially if you don't do a big cuff, this goes really quickly. I think I was on the phone with my mom when I knit most of this. So this is the thumb, thumb gusset that's starting to happen. The thumb on this blue, in this blue yarn is so lovely. It's really nice, it sticks out. Um, yeah, and then generally the way, that, the way that I wear them is that the, the flaps fold it over. And you get these little cables on the outside and it'll look a little less kinked up after I block it. But yeah, it's pretty cute. I'm thinking that I'll be able to wear them to the next farmer's market because it's coming Sunday because, um, like I said, this was in like a couple hours and that's almost <laughs> not half the work, but it's definitely a third of the work. So it's, it's a quick, is there a quick knit? Yeah. And the blue is just so beautiful. It's such a good color. I love blues. Uh, I don't know if I said last time that I grew up not liking blue because it was everybody's favorite color when I was a kid. So I was like, no blue. Um, and I'm now, <laughs> so many years later, having a blue phase. This is sort of greeny blue. I've had this shirt a long time. Um, but like I recently got bento bags for projects that were blue. I recently have another linen dress that I bought that was blue. I've got some um, yarn for my fruition cowl that's starting um, Monday, March 21st. God, that was hard to pull out. Uh, the, the, I also got blue yarn for that. So it's sort of like this, like Robin's egg. Um, this doesn't really look minty, but um, that's kind of the color I was going for. I was like, I want a mint. And I just sort of ended up with this like greeny blue. This is kind of almost a sea foam. Anyways, it's a trend that's happening that I'm just buying more blue things all of a sudden. I do like to do that. I do like to like fixate on a color and buy a lot of it and buy a lot of yarn in that or maybe knit a, a sweater in it or two and get like really into another color. I'm also knitting another navy blue sweater and I have two navy blue sweaters. And I have a store-bought thrifted navy blue cardigan that I was like, so I'll have four navy blue sweaters. So maybe I have a thing for navy blue. That's fun. Anyways, the Farmer's Market Mittens is available on Ravelry and my website at victoriouswool.com. And um, it's perfect for spring, winter, and fall when it's a little chilly and you just want to warm your hands a little bit. And I just leave them tucked into the pockets of my coat. I did get some um, needle tips via company's name. I tucked the card in so I could. It's called Odd Knots and Threads. I don't know if that will reverse or not. I can't remember. I think YouTube will flip it around for me. And um, it's Odd, O D D, Knots, and K N O T S, and Threads.com. And she has a couple of sets, or more than a couple, a few different sets of um, knit, knit needle tip stoppers. This is the little leaf one. And as I pull all my projects out, I'll show you um, the ones that, I really wanted the cactus ones. I think those are over there. I'll have to get them later, but um, I'm really happy. I love like really cute little things. Obviously the stitch markers and progress keepers and and for a pair of mittens or socks like this, you really need to put a stopper on your needle because the, there's so many stitches on here, they just desperately want to pop off and ruin your day. So I've got that in the red one. I've gotten a lot of these lately. I think I got five recently and I know eight. I got eight of these recently. And um, I just love them. And because I have so many projects, I think they're all being used. <laughs> um, the next thing, just what's ever closest to me, is uh, what I'm going to grab. This is the Great Love Cardigan by Anne Stryke. I believe she's German, I think. And um, that's the inside. 
It's an open cardigan designed in Lopi, so I'm knitting it in its suggested yarn. So it's got a um, alternated rib row where you break, you break the ribbing. It's not broken rib, but it's something similar, a four stitch repeat that's offset, three by one offset. I do really like the inside as well. You'll see that inside of work coming in one of my own designs because I loved it so much. Um, and I tried it on this morning and it's about here. And so I want to make it... I think if I have enough yarn for it, I think I want to go mid thigh and I'm not sure I do have enough yarn. I bought, I think I had 24 balls of lopi. And I think last I counted, maybe I didn't get 24. I have, I think I have 12 left. So they're like 200 something each. So I don't know how long I'll be able to go and I have to make the sleeves. So I might go like pretty far and then do a sleeve and see how much yarn that takes and maybe do both sleeves, I don't know. And then we'll, I'll just make it as long as possible because I want, just want a big black, cozy, warm cardigan. Um, it has needle topper stoppers on it also from the same company. These ones are like little blooms, little tulips, really cute. Uh, and I, I think after I filmed the last episode, I picked this back up and it was like a weird rectangular splotch, splotchy thing and I turned it into a sweater in a couple days, magic. Um, so that's a really fun pattern. It's a really fun construction. I love going from like a blob to a sweater. Um, and uh, that one's in the blue bento. I talked about the fact that I'm doing a cow for my fruition. Cowl. Cowl, cowl for my cowl. Um, this is a 13 stitch lace repeat. I think you only repeat it three times, as I recall. Came out in 2018. And it's about, I kind of remember it being five feet long, but now maybe it's six feet long. You do a provisional cast on, and then you do a three needle bind off so that you take that cast on a bind off and you um, three needle, three needle them together, which I really love doing. A three needle bind off is super fun. You can also just do a regular cast on, regular bind off, and then mattress best stitch them together. But um, learning little techniques like that, doing a provisional cast on with a very short number of stitches to learn, you know, instead of doing a provisional cast on, that's like a whole sweater or something. And then doing a three needle bind off with a short amount of stitches. Like you get to see how the technique it, what the technique is without having to do a lot of work. So that's why I wanted to feature those techniques in this pattern. And you can do it twice, not but twice, but I really, really like, I have a big neck. I have a long neck. So I like to wrap things three ways and then you just get a little peek of the yarn arms. Plus, if you wrap it three times, you can wear it in the winter. So I, or you can at least wear it in some colder temperatures. Obviously, if it was really cold, if it was freezing and the wind was really blowing, it would not keep me warm enough because of all the little lace eyelet, eyelets. And there's also like obviously spots in between the layers. So I would want something thicker, maybe like color work, but for a lot of the in-between weather that we get around here, it's perfect. Um, anyways, I the story about the cowl is that my mom has been wanting to make this for quite a long time. She's a little intimidated about the lace. I taught my mom how to knit, not the other way around. Um, I have a German, I had a German grandmother, she knit like lace doilies way back in the day, but she died way before I was ever interested in knitting. So we never did it together, but um, my mom crocheted a little bit when she was growing up, but she never learned how to knit. So um, 
when I taught her a few years ago, she just took to it um, really well and loves it much more than crochet. So she wanted to do this, but she's a little intimate. She's had um, some not bad experiences with lace, but like just tricky um, counting yarn overs and that kind of thing. So we're gonna do it together and I was gonna cast on another one. That's what I'm gonna do with the Magpie Fibers Nest Sport, which is a 100% Coriadale yarn. So it has like a, just a little bit of farm crunchiness to it, which is perfect. I'm sure it'll soften up when I wash it. Um, Magpie Fiber yarns are really lovely. I have not ever used this base before you though. So I got a couple of these for fruition. So I will have a um, bluey green lacy AC cowl and we're starting Monday, which is a week from today. And I wanted to give people enough time to buy yarn or stash dive or whatever. Um, I think it's 500 yards of sport weight. Um, if you want to use a DK weight, you can. I don't know how much yardage that would take because I didn't test that, but um, it would just make your how a little wider because DK is bigger. So you're going to get a bigger, if you do the same number of stitches, you're going to get a bigger, um, a wider cowl. That's that word I'm looking for. <laughs> um, but I would say either that you just accept the fact that you're going to get a bigger one, or you can do one less repeat and only do two repeats and then it would be shorter or sh narrower. So it's just, it's a little bit of experimentation. If you want to use a different yarn, same thing with fingering weight, you're going to get a smaller, um, narrower cowl than if you use a sport weight because the yarn is smaller and um, you would probably have to knit it for longer or only wrap it twice. So it really depends. It's, it's adaptable to width and length in that way. So you don't have to have sport because not everybody has sport. But um, I encourage you to join the cow if you want. Um, a couple of my other friends were interested in doing it and my mom and I were gonna do it. So I thought I might as well open it up to anybody who wants to. There is a Ravelry group, my Ravelry group. There's a, there's a um, thread that I started that if you go to my, um, well, I'll link it below, but it's also linked in my Ravel in blah, blah, blah. It's also linked in my Instagram profile. Hi, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hello. Um, okay. What's next? That's happening. Oh, I got there's a, little, a few more details I want to just say. Um, we're starting next Monday, but you can start anytime. You can even start late. It doesn't matter. There's no rules and no prizes so you don't even have to post by a certain time. I just wanted it to be very um, easy and like no, almost no instructions besides the fact that there's a pattern um, and uh, you don't have to finish with us. I The, the soft deadline is May 1st just because I want to make sure that um, my mom and I like focus and actually do it together instead of, you know, letting it go and then she never ends up finishing it. I mean, she may not need um, as much support as we're talking about. Maybe her needing, she might finish it without me. All of that is totally fine. So I'll link all the things below. If you want to join, I would love you to knit it with us. That would be really fun. And I love seeing other people knit my patterns and the colors they choose and how they wear it. It's really cool. And something I... <laughs> I cast on the Halibut sweater by Caitlin Hunter. She just released that a little while back, maybe like a month or so ago. Um, I just barely started the color work. So I'm gonna do the mock neck. There's a bunch of different neckline options. I'm using the Kelvin and Scout that recommended for the pattern and the oatmeal colorway and the navy head colorway. So I really like it. Um, so soft. I've knit a couple things in it already. And I think last week was when I talked about picking the size for this pattern. So I ended up picking the size two um, because I need to size down generally when I knit patterns, I think now. And um, I talked a little bit about that last week, but um, 
I do a lot of things to make sure I pick the right size. And then I also have to take into account my personal experience, which is I've been knitting sweaters that are a little too big for me. Even though the numbers say that they'll be right on with what the pattern is suggesting, I need a little smaller sweater. So I'm, instead of a size three, which would have been perfectly on with the pattern's numbers, I chose a size two. So I think that'll be, I think that will work out. Um, I haven't made much progress on this. I, I'm sure I showed it last time. This is the, there's a couple ideas I'm, I have with this thing. Here it is. This is the shape it will be, it will just be bigger. Um, I kind of want to see what happens, what, how busy I get throughout the year. But what I would like to have is a free pattern available to people who sign up for my newsletter. Right now, the only incentive to sign up is a discount code, but I want to give something for free so that people can get something and they can see how my patterns are written. And um, uh, I'm just gonna do a bait, you know, this is just a basic garter stitch Linus shawl, but maybe not everybody has done a Linus shawl before. They're super fun. Plus it's with bulky yarn and you could like mix and match colors. Um, I am maybe gonna put tassels on the end. So I just need to finish this one. You know, it's a good uh, TV watching project. And um, I think I'll, I'll think I will, plan is kind of just to make it super basic and write it up, maybe have a couple people um, test it to see if they had a good experience because that's what testing is really for. Now, testers shouldn't be, um, I was just watching another podcast about this. Testers shouldn't necessarily be trying to catch errors because that's the job of the tech editor and I'll have a tech editor also, but the, the testers are there to give feedback about whether or not it fits and if it's a sweater or uh, something that you wear, which is, it is a shawl, so you would be wearing it. If it works as intended and um, it's fun and enjoyable to knit, so maybe I just have a couple people do it. Um, but yes. I hope that, uh, I mean, it's not the right, if I finish it, it should have been for me to wear it, you know, bulky knit, it would have been probably a couple months ago, but maybe we'll have some colder days. I just have so many projects that I don't think I would probably finish it before, before it's going to, I won't finish it before the cold goes away. Okay. Talked about that one. These are both, um, Chambolet. Bentos from another website, different from the colored ones. Um, uh, you know, I'm only gonna show this because I said I was gonna show all the projects I have. Um, but I have literally, I'm like not even swatching right now. I think I took the needles out. <laughs> so this is a Malabrigo Rasta skein, just like the, the brown yarn before. Um, and I'm gonna uh, knit a, the one of the goodnight day sweaters. Um, I just started a swatch that I pulled out because I needed those big needles. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna do a pullover, which I also should get going because it's also the super cold season is also leaving me. So it's like I got a race to get certain things done before before my mind changes, and I'm like no longer care because if I was to leave this undone, unstarted. And then like next fall rolled around, I probably would not care anymore. Like I, what I desire will change and then I will never make this. Whereas if I actually knit half of it or really once I get started on it, these, these bulky weight quick sweaters are just so fun. I'd probably finish it. So it's just like I'm chasing my own um, change of, of <laughs> change of uh, heart, I guess. I have already, yeah, shown this white sock. <laughs> we talked about this last time. Nothing has happened on this white sock. Um, this looks cute. It's also actually good for me to take all these things out because I have them all listed down and I'm writing the progress on each of them and stuff. But it's also good to be like, oh yeah, this is like, looks really cute. And I was just gonna try to knit a little more, a few more white rows before I um, do a black row. I don't even think I brought black yarn with me, so. Maybe I won't work on that. Um, it's a yellow one. Lots of bright colors in the wintertime are super important for me. Um, 
So having like, <laughs> so fun. I need a purple one now. I like to have the, for some reason, the rainbow is really appealing to me when all the colors are together. Um, okay, I do have a black one. Did I, did I have two black ones or just one black one? Oh, this is a fun project. So I just decided to knit a sock, vanilla sock. And um, this is a homespun house colorway called Disco Taco. I think I've talked about it before. I have I'll probably, obviously, obviously haven't done me much progress on it. Um, probably since the last time it came on camera. But I was going to try and see if I could write up a basic pattern where you turn which means you start knitting inside out. Um, and I wanted to have the sock, when you wear it, have the wrong side out. Cause I just think when you do a lot, the speckled yarns look really good with reverse stockinette. But I was gonna have, um, what I did was I just did the ribbing and I did the leg of the sock in stockinette. And then I would turn the work and you do like one short row stitch and you turn the work and you start um, the heel flap would be then on the wrong side and then you would do the gusset, finish the heel, and then you would turn again and, uh, do reverse stockinette or do regular stockinette to the toe and then you'd finish the toe. And so it would be a whole sock to celebrate speckled yarns, Molly's yarns, and to teach, like teach people how you can literally like turn your work one time and you can start working on the inside. And I just think that's, it's a really handy like thing to know how to do. And it could be just really fun, basic sock pattern with a little twist. So I wasn't intending this project to be that kind of thing. I was just making a sock and then I flipped it inside out and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, I just did that with the farmer's market mittens where I knit the cable for the top of the hand on the wrong side. So when you fold it down, the cables are facing out. So I'm kind of like into that idea, but I haven't worked on the next step for this in a while, but it's written in my list of like next phase of all the patterns is to figure out how to do that, how to write that. The Lopey shawl, I was working on just a concept of, um, I've shown this a couple times. I think I did it in a, did I do it in a black? I think I did it with stripes. I've definitely shown this swatch before or a, another swatch with a similar pattern. Um, what I'm doing right now, as you can see, is I've started to decrease Boop. from here, to, from here to here. And what I need to do is finish that because what I am trying to figure out is um, I need to know how many, well, when you swatch for a design as opposed to swatching for a pattern that you're going to knit that someone else that you bought, um, is that the gauge gives the designer all this information. So this design concept is going to be um, top down. So I'm just going to cast on the full length of the shawl. The wingspan is another way of saying that. All at once at the beginning and then you slowly eat away either side and decrease and make a triangle shape to a point in the center. So I did a big swatch for just the stitch patterns to see if I liked them together and then I started to decrease on each corner to see how that would work and whether or not that would look good. This is sort of like a mini version and then I'll net measure it and then I'll calculate how many stitches I need to cast on for how wide I want it to be and also how deep I want it to be. So that's what I'm doing. And this is definitely something I hope, 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 hope that I pick back up this week. So it's really good for me to pull it out and talk about it a little bit so I can get excited again and um, resume swatching. I'm actually gonna leave that out and not wrap it up so that I can pick it up. Um, I think the last thing I worked on this morning in my attempt to make 
progress on each project and also have the projects be pick upable anytime is I had for this for this one this is flam um, I saw her name it's Justina it was in an Amarisu everything's linked below but it's nice if I actually remember um, this is a open cardigan so I'm knitting a black open cardigan and I'm knitting a gray open cardigan. So I will be happy in cardigans in the spring. Um, and uh, I might try this one on. I do have a cute sleeping dog on my lap who uh, would be upset if I moved. But um, it's very cozy. Anyways, what I did this morning was I tried it on and measured and was like, all right, I think I'm ready for the pockets. And so then I made a pocket. And you put some stitches, you put stitches on hold, which is what this purple cord is for. And then you make, you know, cast on those stitches on the needle so you can keep going and you make basically a hole that I will fill in with a pocket later. But I I had some time to move what I, what, how I would call like moving my project to the next phase. And then I figured that out. And now I'm back to the point where I can just pick it up anytime and knit, knit, knit. So um, I am using my knitter's barber cords to as the waist yarn or stitch holder because why not? So these are, I talked about these on a previous podcast. They come in a little tin. Are you interested in this? Um, there it is. It's a little two hollow tube and it attaches to, it's magic. It attaches to the um, tip of your needle really firmly actually with very little pressure and then you can pull your needle out and all of your life stitches will be on here so i did it with the pockets and uh, i could have easily done waist yarn it's in this instance it's there's no reason to do waist yarn versus an, a barber cord or um some other kind of cord the reason I did is because I had them and I love using them and I just stuck it on my needle and pulled the little bit pulled the stitches for the pocket out and then I detached it and I have two. So I did, you know, I have two different colors. I have orange ones too. And I just ordered a bunch of pink ones. This is the kind of thing I decided that, oh no, orange, right? I have orange, I ordered pink. Um, I wanna be able to like leave them in a project for like a month or however long if I need to. So that means I need more of them. And um, yeah, they're just so handy that I like the bright colors very happy with this and I'll link those below too. Um, yeah, so I got, I got it to the next phase and I'm very happy with that. So now I can just knit on it whenever I want to. I think that's it. I'm going to cast on fruition on Monday and then that, that's where that's where those socks, the Lopi shawl, Linus. Yeah. I talked about it all. So that'll be nine plus projects. And it's kind of a lot for me, but um, I think a couple years back, it's always interesting thinking about the history of projects because I had sort of like cast on addiction for a long time where I would just cast on it. I worked at a, I worked at a store that sold yarn. It wasn't a yarn store, but it had like a little yarn section and I would buy yarn on my break for like no reason because I was bored and I just like start something and then I would never do anything with it and it would just sit and so I would buy like lots of one skeiners or and lots of needles that I would purchase there too just to start something and um uh, after many years I think this was in 2018 that I did it where I pulled out all of the whips and I would put them out 
all out and looked at all of them and thought, which one of these do I care about still? And how old are these? <laughs> and so I think I, I think I pulled it down to 13 at that time. And then it took me a couple years to finish all of those 13. I would of course cast on other things in the interim, but uh, it took me a couple years to get through all those. So all those old whips are done. And um, then it was like, no, okay, now I wanna make sure that I don't carry any whips into the new year. And I was really intense about it. And I think last year was the most extreme because I didn't, when I didn't buy yarn, I didn't cast on as much. And so I really didn't knit as much. And yeah, I just didn't add a lot of cast on. So I want to knit more this year and um, I'm buying yarn again and it's just nice to, you know, if I want to cast on a sweater, then I can. If I want to do a cowl, then I can. So I'm being a little bit more relaxed about it. But it does mean that for me to feel um, yeah, for me to feel like I'm making progress on something, I want to write it down and kind of keep track of it. So I am a very disorganized, scattered kind of person. And so I, I implement these like rigid roles a lot of the time to keep me boundaried so that I don't know nuts. So I think the whole idea of writing things down and making progress notes um, helps me not feel overwhelmed by having nine projects and also keeps me working on them as opposed to like not working on it at all, having months go by and then feeling just, oh, well, I've had this thing for so long. I'm sort of bored of it, even though I haven't worked on it just because it's been around. That happens where just like, oh, this has been languishing or like it's been a whip for too long. I'm no longer interested in it. Like with the that um, bulky sweater, if I don't cast it on now, my intentions and like the purchase that I made recently for that yarn will have kind of in a sense gone to waste that energy will like go nowhere so like I need to actually do it once it gets past a certain point then then I will have more motivation to keep going on it so that's sort of just managing my managing my projects so I hope that you are feeling happy with your projects too and always encourage people to think about the ways that they work best whatever is supportive for you in your in your creation um everybody's so different everybody does things differently and it's fun to learn about what other people do as long as you feel like you like your method um and you don't feel pressured to do what someone else is just is doing because oh maybe they're doing it right because there's no right way to knit there's no right way to manage a project you don't even need it need to manage your project lots of people just need one thing at a time um so yeah sort of you do you kind of thing anyways we're going to go outside now maybe kind of looks the same i talked for 40 minutes and it's the same it might rain all day we might just have to get wet and then dry off um but i hope you <laughs> have a nice week and if you want to join the Cal, you can sign up. Well, you don't have to sign up. You can find all the information below. Bye.